Please turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 19. The title of my sermon tonight is David the Prophet. This is one of Brother Fannin's, uh, anybody looking for a topic next month? Here you go. He just handed me this and I said, okay, David the Prophet. All right. And he says, hey, just whatever comes to mind, just run with it. I said, All right. So we're going to see if we're on the same page. I don't think so. But, uh, <laughs> but we're going to see where I run with this. All right. So uh, David the Prophet, King David, he's known as one of the most fascinating characters in the Bible. He's got some very cool stories. He's, uh, he's probably in everybody's top three, top five people in the whole Bible. I like him, and, uh, but he also was a prophet. And I'm not gonna go into specifically what he prophesied about. Uh, we could go into so much there. But he, I wanna talk about the fact that as a prophet, he heard from God. He could inquire of the Lord and the Lord would speak directly to David. Now most of the kings of Israel, they had to take it on faith that this prophet that was running side by side with them was giving them good information, that they were actually hearing from God and they had to trust that prophet. But David was, in a way, his own prophet. Now he did also have Samuel and he had Nathan and Gad and he had some of these, these men of God that, that were with him. But in a way, we're gonna look at some of the times that he actually was his own prophet and he spoke to God and God spoke to him and then he would tell people what God told him. And so uh, I got three points. I don't know if we're going to have time to get to them all. But my first point is if you want to be a prophet, you need to hang out with the prophets. Amen. Amen. Okay. Look down at your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 19. This is after David goes on the run from King Saul and uh, Saul's looking for him. Look in verse 18. The Bible reads, So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. You know what it seems like to me? Everybody that Saul is sending to go look for David, they're getting caught up in this prophecy web, and they're all just <laughs> preaching. Now, you know, they're having men's preaching out every night. So I don't know what's going on. And then and, and if we keep reading, we don't have the time. King Saul goes himself, and he ends up prophesying as well, all of them. And he ends up stripping down naked. It's get, it gets a little weird. But uh, um, anyways, so if you want to, if my first point is, if you want to be a prophet, you need to hang out with the prophets, yeah, okay? If you want to be a preacher, you need to hang out with the preachers. Where are the preachers hanging out? In Jacksonville, Florida, where are the preachers at? Right You're right here. Right. Steadfast Jacksonville Baptist Church, right here. All right, you're not going to find them at the Chris Tomlin concert at the, the <laughs> Veterans Memorial Arena. You're, it's not going to it's not going to happen. Right. All right, so looking at, we're just going to kind of go in order here. Chapter 20. Um, chapter 20. This is the I'm not. We don't have time to read it. This is the uh, the the chapter where David kind of gets with Jonathan, and they they say, hey, you know, Jonathan says, Dad's looking to kill you. Uh, we we got this this situation going on here and they, they devise this plan to basically warn David uh, whether the king's intentions are ill towards him and you know the story they, they shoot the arrows and everything Jonathan fires them and he warns David that he needs to flee so in chapter 20 David gets the hint okay I gotta get out of town David, uh, King Saul is looking to kill me again so he leaves and then skip over to chapter 21 in chapter 21, the first place David runs to is um, the city of Nob, and he runs down a prophet, or a priest, uh, I'm sorry, a, a priest, Ahimelech. And uh, he meets with him, and he, he, you know, he goes inside, the, he takes the, the showbread, and he also, he needs a weapon, so he says, do you have any swords here? And he says, yeah, we got Goliath's sword, the one you took from him. He says, that'll do, take it, I'll take it. He, uh, he takes that and he flees on and then we go to chapter 22 and King Saul catches word 
that Ahimelech has aided, he has aided David's escape. Now, that the, the priest Ahimelech has no idea what David was up to. He just knows that, hey, David comes in, he's like, you know, the, the king's right-hand man. He needed some help, I helped him out. And how does Saul reward Ahimelech? He killed him and 85 other priests that day, and he killed every person in that town and the livestock. Pretty brutal, all right? Yeah. It's not as, uh, anyways. Steadfast might be brutal, but we're not as brutal as King Saul. Right. So, but uh, now that's that's chapter 22. But I want you to look, and uh, I want you to look in verse. Oh boy, have I lost it? I want you to look in verse 13. It says, And Saul said unto him, Why have you conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day? He says, Why have you inquired of the Lord? So who inquired of the Lord? The priest. All right. Uh, he did. Ahimelech. Now look in chapter 23. Okay. Chapter 23, verse 1. It says, Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord. Now, in my study, this looks like the first time David has inquired of the Lord in, in the Bible. Okay. Notice he actually gets an answer. David inquires of the Lord, and shall I go and smite the Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. So now David, he no longer needs a priest. He no longer needs Samuel to go to. He's got this direct connection with God. And we know back in chapter 16, that's when he actually gets anointed by Samuel. He actually is told, You're going to be the future king. So that's pretty interesting. Second point. If you want to be a prophet, you need to put in the work first, okay? You don't just become a prophet. You don't become a preacher overnight. You have to put in the work. You have to study your Bible. You have to pray. You have to be in a, a, a faithful church member. You need to preach. And that's what we see God do, uh, David doing in, in, this, in his early works. Um, he was fighting the Lord's battles long before he became a prophet. And who's to say this is the first time David inquired of the Lord and actually heard from him? But that's... And the best of my abilities, it looks like that's the first time in the Bible that it's mentioned. All right, and so let's go over to uh, chapter 30. We've just got, uh, I want to show a few more of these if I got the time. Chapter 30 and verse 8, it says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop, and shall I overtake them? And he said, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. And in chapter 2, verse 1, he's still inquiring of the Lord, and God's talking to him. Chapter, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3, 18. You don't have to turn there. We're running out of time. And, and so on and so on. There's about four more references to David himself talking to God, and God is talking specifically, directly at David and giving him answers. He doesn't have to go run down another prophet to inquire for him. Let's get down to the third point. My last point is this. If you want to remain a prophet or if you want to remain a preacher, you better stay in the will of God. Amen. Okay? Go to 2 Samuel chapter 12. We know what happened in David's life. Shortly after he became king, he got a little idle, right? Mm -hmm. he got a little, you know, he took his eye off the ball, so to speak. And it says in chapter 12, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Wait, I thought the Lord talked directly to David. But now he's sending a prophet to David. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And you know what he says. He's got some bad news. All right, so, so here's the thing. If you want to have that direct connection with God, you better have a clean conscience towards Come God. Right. You good. better, you know, you can't be living in sin and right. fornication and, and adultery. Right. You can't have any of that yeah. that blemish on you and expect to still have a, uh, right. a great 
uh, communication with God. It's just not going to be possible. Right, right. Now, was God, was uh, David completely severed from God at that point? No. We know that he humbled himself. We know that he got his, his uh, life back on track. And uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 1, you don't have to turn there, but it says, uh, Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, it is for Saul and his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. So we see that that relationship was restored. And we know 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, you know, uh, my points in, in summary again is, if you want to be a prophet, hang out with the prophets. Yeah. If, if you want to be a prophet, you need to put in the work first. Yeah. You need to be, if you want to be a good preacher, you need to, you need to start working on that right now. And point three, if you want to remain a prophet or a preacher, you better not forget your first love. You better not, uh, you know, wander off the off of God's will and for His life, for your life. So that's all I got. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me the opportunity to preach tonight. I ask that you bless the next preacher as he comes up. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.